Hello, in this video, we're going to prove that the convergence and quadratic mean implies convergence and probability. And we're also going to prove that convergence almost surely implies convergence and probability. Now, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to start at the second one first and then prove the first one. So here we're going to look at the uh, convergence and quadratic mean implies uh, convergence and probability. And the proof starts by uh, using the Chebyshev's inequality, and that is that the probability of this difference is greater than zero uh, goes to zero. So if we can, and that's what this means, it means those get really close and this probability goes to zero. That's this part. But we need to make assum this assumption that it converges in quadratic mean. Well, this piece up here looks kind of like that, and, that, and that's the case. Uh, thus, if the we know that we converge in quadratic mean, that means that this difference goes to zero, which means this one goes to zero. So it implies that this difference goes to zeros for any epsilon, um, which equivalently means that it converges in probability. So if we assume quadratic mean, it converges in probability. So that's a simple little short proof. So here we're going to try to show that uh, convergence almost surely implies convergence and probability. And now what we do here is we set up a set. So let's assume that we have a, a, a set, a subset of our sample space where it converges almost surely. So now the definition of this says that um, that it should be the entire sample space except for maybe uh, elements that have a probability of zero happening okay and so and that's what it means so note that, that if we converge almost surely for points in a it means that there's an epsilon greater than zero and that there exists an n which can be a function of that epsilon such that this difference is uh, is very small, less than epsilon. And this is for all n greater than cap n. Now note that it's except for a possibility of a subset of s with a probability of zero. So it's usually in the entire sample space, but there may be an occasional point in here that has probability zero that's not in here. So this set A can be shown to be this. And now this is the whole crux of the proof. Um, and you may have to write out sets, you may have to write out this and then unions and take up the whole page trying to understand this part. And matter of fact, sometimes they show they, uh, that they use a definition like this for absolutely convergent. So sometimes they'll leave this piece off, which looks like the, the uh, uh, limit in femum of this set. And, well, it is, but um, they, they start out for a given epsilon. So in K, X likes the, the epsilon. And then, then it shows that this the way this converges is this set A where it converges almost surely. But then we uh, intersect over all possible epsilons. Anyway, so this is the crux of the proof, and actually I find I, I probably couldn't do this on my own just because of this old intersection, union intersection can be tough. But write it out and, and try to get that straight. Okay, so then we know that a complement that, um, that Xn does not converge almost surely on this complement. And matter of fact, a complement has a probability of zero. But how do we? How in the heck do we get this? So let's. If we take the, the complement of this, De Morgan's law says that we change this to the union, and then we have the complement of this, which is that piece there. Then the complement of this, De Morgan's law says, change that to the intersection, and then that's the complement of that. So that's what this piece is. Then the complement of this, according to Morgan's laws, change that to union and take the complement of this. Well, the complement of this is not less than 1 over k. It's greater than or equal to 1 over k. So this is the complement of A. 
And remember, a complement, this is where it does not converge almost surely. But we know that this has a probability of zero. And so we're most of the way there. And if you think about it, so this can, to show convergence and probability, we need to show that this set for any epsilon converges to, you know, goes to zero. And so, um, but we know a complement goes to zero. So we're really close by, by, by showing this. And then what we'll do is we'll break it up into pieces. And um, so we'll, we'll, let, we'll let this be a set and show that it goes to zero. And then we'll let this be a set and show that it goes to zero. And that's how we're going to prove that this piece here, um, you know, goes to zero in probability. Okay, so let's let BK be this set. Remember, we took off the, the, the initial uh, union over K. So for a given K, this is our set. But notice that if we increase K, this gets smaller. So this get you know, the possibilities of this happening get bigger. So for each K that gets larger and larger and larger, this set actually gets bigger and bigger and bigger too. So that means that BK is an increasing sequence to this A complement as K goes to infinity. And so since it is an increasing set, then we know that the probability of BK approaches the probability of A complement. But if we know that our sequence Xn converges almost surely, that this is zero, we, it's on a set of zero, and therefore BK is zero for any K greater than or equal to one. And then the next note is what we're going to do is kind of, we're going to look at this inner piece here. So note for every fixed K, so that is, um, that's over here, and fixed in, but we're going to let it go to zero. So then CN goes to BK, where CN is this inner, you know, the, this, this inner piece here. So this here. So, um, so notice that for K fixed, so this is for a fixed K, and then if we look at the way N goes, so if, we, if, if N is small, then the, this possibility of bigger and being bigger than one over K is, is big, but for each N that gets bigger, this gets the possibility of this being greater than one over K gets smaller. So actually as N increases, uh, CN decreases, and that's what this is saying. So CN decreases actually to BK, which is from our first one. So hence, the probability of CN decreases in probability to BK, but BK is zero. So if um, AN converges almost surely, which is equivalent to the probability A complement equals zero, then the probability of CN goes to zero. And so for any fixed positive M, Um, so if we look at uh, the CN, okay, and this is the union over all these. So if we just look at one particular set, and that's what this is saying. We just look at one of them. That has to be a subset of the union of them, okay? And that, that means that the probability of this happening is less than or equal to this happening. But we know that the probability of this happening is is uh, probability of CN, which goes to zero. And this is for every K. So th that says that this probability goes to zero, and this is equivalent to saying that XN converges in probability to X. Okay. Well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, the, in the next video, we're going to give several examples and counterexamples, for instance, something that converges in probability but doesn't converge almost surely. The, it's a, it's a one-way implication, or we're going to show something that converges in probability that doesn't converge in quadratic mean. We're also going to show that uh, converges in almost surely and converges in quadratic mean don't imply each other. Anyway, I'll uh, see you and talk to you at the next video. Thanks. Bye.